All right, so you're interested in making all eight variants of the Bane Blade? It makes sense considering how much this costs, uh, but in order to do so, it will require magnets. Um, there's some other great videos out there from uh, Orc Painter Nerd, Gray Shirt Guy, Spiky Bits, and um, I kind of took methods and strategies from all of them and kind of combined them into, uh, into this project here. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, at the moment we have a setup in the Shadow Sword configuration, but uh, if you want a Bane Sword, it's really just as simple as taking off this little uh, muzzle device barrel attachment and boom you've got yourself a bane sword and that'll just sit in uh, via friction um, if you remove this main barrel piece also connected via friction no magnets in there and then attach yourself this little barrel piece and get yourself a storm sword now i took this strategy from gray shirt guy he essentially put three bits of sprue glued together and then kind of jammed it uh, all up inside of there. And what that essentially does is allows this to stay inside of the main barrel body here, or cannon body, uh, via friction. One thing to note is that when you do this, uh, it may require that you cut some of the sprue kind of like kind of shave some of the sprue uh, off of the edges here so that it fits both inside the barrel and then within here. But try to leave the middle kind of wide so that, you know, there's actual friction in there to, uh, to create that. Now, the main magnet parts here involve oop, the removal of this. As you can see in there, I've got four magnets kind of set up for different situations. Um, and then two magnets here. If you're wondering why there's red paint, um, it was just before I inserted the magnets. Uh, it would allow me to kind of, you know, jam it in there and know where to, to line up the magnets within. Um, so yeah, and this is taking three, three by one, three millimeter by one magnets. And, um, you know, just taking the little hand vice drill and then drilling into the sides and super gluing in some magnets. Um, I did take this strategy from Orc Painter Nerd, and by the way, all of these videos will be in the description below so that you can kind of see, um, you know, every method and configuration used here. Um, just, just so that you have all the information. But, um, initially, this is more of like a rectangle so like pretend that there's like plastic under my thumb and then you have like this rectangle here and that aligns with the little uh like stand or like a little nub here so that you can kind of fit in the uh cannon parts and it'll you know uh, be aligned correctly but that kind of makes it difficult to I've seen methods that use this little top piece. Some have it magnetized, others just have a kind of gravity fit in. Um, and I don't know, I, I didn't want, the whole thing that I'm doing is that I don't want rattly plastic and I don't really want little fiddly bits that are kind of magnetized. Um, and I only wanted to use the magnets that I had on hand. I didn't want to you know, go out and, and buy additional stuff just for this project. So. What that cutout allows you to do is keep this top piece on for all configurations and then you can just kind of slide that into place and it's it's more or less, you know, pretty solid. It's not super solid, but I mean, sol more than solid enough to, to, you know, to play a game with. Now, oops, um, so yeah, we can move right on. Uh, this main turret for the hex blade you know, the, the Storm Lord, Shadow Sword, all, all that stuff. Um, we got four magnets in here, kind of held by stilts, or like pegs, made of sprue. Uh, and, you know, the sprue just being the, uh, like the perimeter pieces of the sprue that you get with a kit. Uh, those are just held in place by what I believe are six by two 
Yeah, I think they're they're six by two uh, little magnets, and um, they're kind of made to align with the primary magnet. Oh, just everything falling apart. The primary kind of bo uh, body or hole magnets, which are here. I also got this from uh, Orc Painter Nerd's guide. Um, these just kind of allow the turrets and the you know the the main body. Uh, of the tanks that hold the weapons to uh, to be magnetized in place. Uh, these are, you know, op pretty much everything is optional, I guess. You could just have, you know, most things gravity fit and uh, be totally fine. Um, this is kind of going the extra mile to, to give some kind of stability uh, into, into the tank itself. But um, yeah, let's move on into some of the troop carrier configurations with like the uh opening in the back and stuff um and that involves this this plate here um on the other side you'll see that i have some little cute guardsmen just glued on there and that's uh you'll see in a second why um but in order to do that it involves this piece that is in both configurations just you know whether it's in the front or the back and then we slide this back here. Now, you may notice that there's sprue connected to the sides here. Uh, that is kind of required if you, if you want to, you know, be making uh, the six variants that involve this kind of square, uh, squarish turret head. Um, it involves being in the front or the back, and then this little plate kind of fills in the gap. Um, so yeah, the sprue in here pretty much goes more or less the entire length of the inside um, and it's just for st uh, support and stability for this part. Um, Spiky Bits' his video kind of goes into the, you know, in inches and how far these are down and um, doing this myself i mean i just kind of eyeballed it you can align them with the back plate here and just wherever the the bottom of this back plate rests and this doesn't actually rest on the screw it uh it just kind of rests on top of the, the rear engine uh, plate back there but yeah uh if i were to guess i would assume that this is a roughly five Five millimeters down um, it's not exactly straight as you might be able to uh, tell but um, it works it's totally fine um, so yeah we slot these guys back here and then we're able to move main turret piece up front boom magnets the rear magnets on the pegs connect to the, the main body magnets here and then we have what is really the most pain in the ass here, which are these little little turrets, um, heavy stubber turrets. Uh, I attached some sprue and then put little magnets on the bottom of them. Uh, again, these are the three millimeters by one magnets. And then those kind of correspond to, to three by ones on the, uh, on the hull itself. Um, these aren't perfect. I mean, I'll stick them in here and they just kind of crooked-ish. Um, they don't really sit flush or, or nice and flat. And uh, it kind of bothers me, but at the same time, I mean, I don't know. It, it's not a huge deal. Um, so long as, oops, spawn sense, everything just coming off. Um, it's not a huge deal. I mean, uh, I could go back and kind of make this perfect. Maybe drill, drill some holes and stuff, but... Um, I don't think it's entirely necessary. I mean, let's be honest here, that, that seems fine. And the guys that are guardsmen that are kind of glued here are meant to just, you know, permanently be there to give the impression that someone is manning these, these little, uh, little heavy stubber turrets. Um, they don't line up exactly. It almost looks like they're, they're remotely controlling the turrets with like, you know, game controllers or something, but, um, it's fine, totally fine, whatever. I think it's it's totally fine. Um, one thing to note, this back plate here that isn't actually removable with all this stuff here, so let me just take it off real fast. <clears throat> this back plate here 
this top covering with like the skull engine and the lines and then this um, door it looks to be like almost a door or something uh, I glued into place um, now underneath uh, these two things it is kind of it looks to be more uh, troop space like like area to, to move in for people um, I just went ahead and, and glued these on um, Again, totally optional, you do what you want to do. Um, but I figured, you know, the least amount of rattly plastic that can, you know, be attached with gravity or friction, uh, the better. Of course, you know, you could find ways to, to magnetize this in place. Um, but I just went ahead and glued them on, and if an opponent doesn't allow me to run a Stormlord or Troop Carrier variant because they don't see the, the very rear troop area, then it's... I probably wouldn't want to play with them anyway. So, let's just go ahead and put everything back on real fast, so I can kind of show you the front here. Here, we have the Vulcan Mega Bolter Cannon. Nice. Standard, taken from Grey Shirt Guy's video, just putting two magnets uh, in the back here, drilling the holes, and then aligning those with the, uh, kinda can see the upper, let's try to get the lighting here, and you can kinda see the upper magnets above the middle magnets there, and uh, those will align with the top magnets here. Just kinda slot those right into place and bang, boom. Mega bolters in, you got yourself a Stormlord. Cool. Now, one thing to note, these armor plates here, I went ahead and glued into place and it's the ones with these cutouts on the side here to accommodate the Mega Bolter. Because, as you can see, it kind of uh, is a bit wider along the frame and therefore it requires these cutouts to, to be flush there. Um, I found in the instructions all of them pretty much uh, mention using these plates, but uh, you'll probably see that there are these plates as well for the front that just, you know, slot in to the exact same place, but don't have those little cutouts on the side. If you plan to do this, definitely just use these. I mean, when you're running it in the, uh, you know, the doom hammer or the, you know, bane, bane hammer or Whatever, I, I don't know, I'm honestly a little bit confused on all the names, but um, as you can see, there's there's a bit of a, what looks to be empty space here, I think it looks totally fine. Um, but again, ultimately, up to you. Um, these can just kind of gravity fit into place, like you don't necessarily need um, to glue them or, or magnetize them, but if you find a way to do it, let us know. Just to show, um, you know, that this also just kind of friction fits into place for, uh, to go from a Bane Hammer to a Doom Hammer, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's totally fine, but it's actually a much more solid connection than at the end of the, the Shadow Sword cannon, but, um, yeah, totally fine, that's cool. Um, again, we're gonna remove this, and I guess, because all the sponsons have pretty much fallen out, we can just kind of show those. There is a magnet on the inside of this, approximately right in here within this little square part, kind of where the two uh, side pieces meet. And that's where I've placed uh, what I believe is a six by two magnet, just a, you know, moderately sized magnet. Um, and that's on the inside of this. I wish I'd taken a picture before I'd glued the top part on, but uh, that corresponds to the magnet we have in the sponsor. Just kind of attached via, you know, sprue peg, uh, standard thing kind of for this whole build. And, uh, yeah, that allows you to uh, just kind of magnetize these on and, you know, remove them if you don't want them, whatever, it's fine. Uh, these last cannon turrets glued in, uh, three by one millimeter magnets. Um, this just seems to be something that everyone does and, um, I just followed suit because the holes are already three millimeters. It just 
requires jamming some glue in there and then sticking in your magnet. Totally fine. Bolters. Do you don't want bolters? We can have flamers because there are three by one magnets on the weapons themselves, which require you to remove uh, the plastic that's either kind of set in there with an X-Acto knife, or if it's on, I believe this side, it'll be a kind of like a peg that sticks out that you can just cut off with, uh, you know, plastic cutters and then uh, drill into it to put in a three by one. So yeah, let's say you don't want to be running heavy bolters for whatever reason, and you want your flamers. Then uh, you just kind of jam them in here, and uh, yeah, totally fine. They still angle up and down. They go left and right. Totally fine. Left side I find to be a little bit tricky to get into, but totally went in fine, and yeah. Cool. Those are the sponsons. Bang. Now, what well, everyone wants to know when you're making these hex blades is can you make the Bane blade too? And the answer is of course you can. So long as you take the time to, you know, magnetize the right things, kind of line everything up, you can totally make the Octoblade magnetize a no problem. Now that requires this little plate to be removed. One thing to note, these plates have two little tabs here on both sides, and those are to be aligned with these two holes here. Uh, yeah, just go ahead and, and take, you know, sprue cutter or whatever and just chop those off. Um, maybe if you want to sand them down or get them to be uh, nice and smooth with an X-Acto knife, definitely do that. But it just requires moving into this other plate here. Oops, and uh, yep, that fits nicely. And then you take your Bane Blade. Little turret here. Let's just go ahead and show the magnets. Uh, I went ahead and used more of the 6x2 magnets. Um, now this, again, doing the hull magnets, like the main hull magnets on the Bane Blade, as well as the, um, you know, the, the Hex Blade, um, uh, you know, turret, turret head or whatever. Um, it really requires a lot of patience and a lot of trial and error. As you can see, many mistakes were made on this side, just trying to get it lined up and uh, close enough to the actual magnet to get there. Um, not so much on this side. I tried a different technique, and that that's going to work out on this side, but not the other side. Um, so yeah, just keep in mind that it it will require some patience and. Uh, you know, good luck, take your time with it. Um, but yeah, just to show that it totally is possible. This just slides nicely right into here and bang, totally slots in. Maybe a bit of a gap here, but uh, I think as if you line it up a bit more nicely, totally fine. I mean, I think it's an acceptable level of, uh, of gap and tolerance, but um, yeah, totally acceptable uh, gap. Uh, this side isn't too bad. But I'm thinking that on this side, maybe the magnets are just sitting a little bit too close together, resulting in somewhat of uh, the ugly space that you see there. But ultimately, no problem. Now, uh, pretty much the main turret, it's just uh, drilled in there, super glue, three by one. A uh, little magnet in there, uh, and then Bane blade, main cannon. Uh, this one has a six by two in it, and that's because oh, and it's attached to the uh, um, like a tiny piece of uh, sprue, just kind of glued in there. Uh, be patient because this one might take a while to uh, to get right to kind of sit flush with the the little tab. Now you see in there that kind of uh, corresponds to this little notch or tab, uh, like you know, to make it a keyhole to to make sure that this all, like fits nicely. But um, yeah, uh, I put in a six by two in here simply because the three by one wasn't strong enough to to hold this in place. But 
with a, with a slightly larger magnet, I mean, this is totally fine. Um, totally fits, you know, more or less pretty stable. It's a little bit wobbly, but I mean, you know, for the purposes of a, of a game, totally fine. Uh, let's go ahead and move that one. And we have the Hellhammer Cannon. This one was just a simple drill, you know, drill through, stick it in a 3x1. Um, chances are when you're drilling this, uh, you will kind of bust out to the other side. And uh, when you're dealing with the hollow cavity kind of in uh, the rest of the cannon, it can be a little bit tricky, but really I just jammed the, the, the drilled hole full of super glue and then stuck in the 3x1 uh, the magnet. And then just just pushed it to make it flush, and uh, yeah, it dried and it's totally fine. And uh, obviously the three by one is enough for just this small amount of plastic. So just oop, that goes in, bang. Might be a little bit crooked or wonky, and yeah, I mean, obviously everything's kind of still in rough shape. Um, I'll probably go back and uh, clean up some of the. Uh, mold lines and things that you see on the smoke launchers before uh, everything gets primed and painted. But yeah, I just wanted to show everyone that um, this is my Octoblade, kind of taking notes from, from you know, much, much smarter uh, guys on YouTube, and then I just kind of took their ideas, combined them uh, into, into this, and I hope that um, this kind of gives you some ideas on how you want to set up your magnetized pain blade. Um, this is really kind of a departure uh, for this channel. Um, you know, this channel is uh, mostly video games and commentary, but uh, yeah, I just felt the need to uh, to show this guy because um, there are uh, a couple tutorials and guides out there on how to magnetize your pain blades, but they all kind of you know suggest different things and you know. I guess the the point is that um, take from all of these videos what you will and just kind of do what you want, what you want with them, and uh, kind of determine your own way for for your for your bane blade. But yeah, if if you're into uh, video games and and friends talking about you know dumb shit, then uh, feel free to subscribe. And uh, if you want more uh, Warhammer content, perhaps I can show you like a magnetized Lehman Russ or something, then, uh, you know, let me know and uh, I'll see what I can do. But yeah, thank you for watching and good luck on your Baneblade build.